Hey guys, it's Michael from Conquer Chemistry. In this video, we'll be talking about how to determine which compound has a higher boiling point. Quite simply, molecules of stronger intermolecular forces will have a higher boiling point, and that's because boiling is the process of turning a liquid into a gas, and to turn a liquid into a gas, you have to break all of the intermolecular forces. If the intermolecular forces or the strength of the attraction is stronger, then more energy is needed. And to provide additional energy, you have to raise it to a higher temperature. Now, let's talk about the, all the different types of intermolecular forces and how they compare in terms of their strength. The five main types of intermolecular forces that you'll see in most chemistry classes are these. Lenin dispersion forces are the weakest, then dipole-dipole, then hydrogen bonding, then ion-dipole, and then ion-ion is the strongest. So LDFs are the weakest, and ion-ion are the strongest. Now, let's take a look at some example problems. For the following problems, we have to circle the substance with the higher boiling point. So remember, when we're looking at higher boiling point, we're looking for the substance with the stronger intermolecular forces because strong intermolecular forces will lead to higher boiling point. So we're going to first determine what intermolecular forces are present in each of these compounds. So in A, we have HCl versus HF. We're first going to determine the primary intermolecular forces that are present in each of the molecules, and then we'll determine which one is stronger, has a stronger IMF, and that's the one that's going to have a higher boiling point. So HCl, it's polar, so its primary IMF is going to is dipole-dipole. HF, it's going to have hydrogen bonding, because remember, F, hydrogen bonding is HF, HO, or HN. So this is H bond. And we know that hydrogen bonding is stronger than dipole-dipole, so since this has a stronger intermolecular force, it'll have a higher boiling point. Next one, CO2 versus OCS. It's not immediately obvious what the IMF for each of these are, so we can start by drawing the, the Lewis structure. So CO2 looks like, looks like that with the lone pairs, and that makes uh, CO2 nonpolar because it's completely symmetrical. Since it's nonpolar, it will only have London dispersion forces. OCS, on the other hand, looks like this OCO and then, and then double bond of S on the other side. So this molecule is not symmetrical, which makes it polar. And if it's polar, it will have dipole-dipole. And we know that dipole-dipole is stronger than lens dispersion force. So since this has stronger intermolecular forces, it will have a higher boiling point. Next one, C5H12 and C2H4. So both of these are hydrocarbons. When you have a compound that only has carbon and hydrogen, they're going to be nonpolar, and a nonpolar molecule will only have lenin dispersion force. So both of these will have lenin dispersion forces. Lenin dispersion forces is affected by the number of electrons or the size of the molecule. Molecules that are larger will have stronger lenin dispersion forces. So C5H12 is larger than C2H4. This has stronger lenin dispersion forces, and stronger intermolecular forces will lead to higher boiling point. So C5H12 will have a higher boiling point than C2H4. Next one, CH, CH3OH. And we see immediately we see this OH right here, so we know this one will have hydrogen bonds. And then C2H, CH2O, that looks like like this, um, and you see it, it. It doesn't have hydrogen bond. It's uh, it, but this molecule is not. It's not symmetrical uh, because there's two O's and two one O and two H's. So this makes it polar, and if it's polar, it'll be dipole dipole. Hydrogen bonding is stronger than dipole dipole. So CH three OH will have the higher boiling point. Ne versus Br two. Ne is just a single atom, so that's nonpolar, and if it's nonpolar, it will only have lenin dispersion forces. Also, Br2, it's a compound made of a single element, so that is also going to be nonpolar. So it'll also have lenin dispersion forces. So once again, we have a situation where we have two lenin dispersion forces, so we're just looking for the molecule that is larger or has more, more electrons. And to figure that out, we can also take a look at the molar mass. So let's take a look at the periodic table. You can see that the molar mass for neon is, is about 4, and then the molar mass for Br2, it's about 160. So since Br2 has a higher molar mass, it will have stronger lenin dispersion forces, and so Br2 will have the higher boiling point. And the last example, KOH versus H2O. Let's take a look at H2O. H2O we know that has hydrogen bonding, because you have an H directly attached to an O. And then KOH, KOH actually is an ionic compound. It's potassium hydroxide. So since it's ionic, it'll be ion ion. And the reason why we know it's ionic is because K is a metal and OH is a polyatomic ion. Um, then ion ion is stronger than hydrogen bonding, so KOH will have the higher boiling point. And that's uh, how you can determine 
which compound has a higher boiling point. So just really remembering strong intermolecular forces will lead to higher boiling point. Here I kind of rushed through talking about how to determine uh, what IMF a compound has, but I have a detailed video about how to do that. So I'll just link that into the description below. Check that out if, if you're having trouble following along with determining which IMF a compound has. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.